From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Mind. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Glad you're with us. We have an important discussion tonight. We're talking about resources that are available for people who may be struggling uh, to put enough food on the table. And the reality is there are some major changes that are coming down the pike. There have been benefits that were available as a result of COVID and other things, and those things will be changing. They will be changing uh, very shortly. And so we want to help people um, identify what's going to be happening and what they can do about it. And this affects more people than many of us realize. And so I'm glad to be able to, to have this discussion. Happy Allison Jones is here. She's with the Legal Aid Society um, uh, of Tennessee. Allison, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Joining us via Zoom from somewhere. <laughs> of course. Look at that. It's a very it's well lit, <laughs> but it's somewhere. So thank yes, you for being here. Just <laughs> Um, just a run-of-the-mill office just Nashville. a run-of-the-mill <laughs> office okay a legal aid yep. office uh somewhere okay so the essence of this is what there are about to be some big changes is that right and so what's what's about to happen here so just to kind of lay the groundwork for where we've been since uh the pandemic started um back in in the early days you know back in march of 2020 um, at the federal level, there was some additional money allocated to the states to provide maximum food stamp benefits to every household that was receiving food stamps. So there's a range, a monetary range based on your household size. There's a minimum amount of benefits you can receive each month if you're eligible and a maximum amount. Um, so at that time, the maximum amount for a household of one now I'm testing my memory, but I believe it was in the 160s. Um, and the minimum amount would have been $16. So, so somebody eligible for only $16 starting in April of 2020 started receiving that maximum amount every month. Um, so that's a really pretty significant jump um, for folks who are not already at the maximum amount or close to it. I can see that. I'm surprised there are people that were just getting $16. I'm surprised you get that well, little. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, you know, we can we can have a discussion about that as well. Um, but they, they do, you know, um, cut it off at a certain amount. Um, and it is pretty low sometimes for some folks. Um, it's not worth the paperwork um, just to get that that $16. Um, but once the COVID money started coming in, it was a much more uh, much more beneficial for folks to be enrolled. Um, those extra COVID benefits have been issued in Tennessee every month since April of 2020. And with some other programmatic changes, that amount for a household of one has continued to go up. So that went up to $204 in October of 2020 then up to $234 in January 2021, because they gave everyone an extra 15% bump. Um, and then starting in October of 2021, that amount went up to 250 because of some changes in the formula that they used to calculate benefit size. Um, now, December was the last month that Tennessee issued those supplemental COVID benefits. That's because there is no longer a state level state of emergency in place. And the extra COVID benefits program requires that there be both a federal state of emergency declaration in place and a state level state of emergency in place. Now that our state state of emergency has expired, um, January 2022, folks will not see those additional COVID benefits on their snap cards. Well, now, um, okay, they will. let's stop right there. That's yep. that's that's huge. I mean, that, I didn't I didn't know all of this. So you're saying, back in March of of 2020, somebody could have been getting sixteen dollars a month, and then in December they could have been getting two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Is that right? That's correct. Because yes. of the COVID, it could have gone up that much, and now. In January, is it going to go back down to sixteen dollars? If they're eligible for the minimum, it will go back to twenty dollars a month. 
So for folks that have come to rely on that sort of steady stream of income, and a lot of the folks that are at that minimum benefit amount um, are senior citizens. So that's gonna be a very significant drop for them this month. Well, that's a monstrous drop for them. Absolutely, and, yes. And so uh, how many people do you think this affects? I mean, is this um, hopefully not many or is this a whole bunch of people? Well, I think the last numbers that I looked at, there were about 830,000 SNAP participants in the state of Tennessee. Um, that's 830,000 some individuals. That, that number fluctuates a bit month to month. Um, and I would say most folks will see, most of that 830,000 will see a drop. Now it may not be that significant a drop. It may not be a drop from the maximum to the minimum, but most people are not eligible for the maximum amount to begin with. So they will see some sort of reduction. And how concerned are you about the impact of this? We're, we've been very concerned, um, you know, just the, that the messaging, as you may have seen from my, um, my description of what's happened here, it's a pretty complicated story to tell. Um, you know, the average uh, person who receives these benefits uh, may not have kind of been following the legislative process and the state of emergency declarations. Um, that it may just come as a surprise to them um, this month when they've got quite a bit less on their card. Um, now I will say the Department of Human Services, which administers SNAP benefits in Tennessee, um, did send out notices, we understand, to everyone who receives food stamps to let them know that this would be coming. Um, but it still may be difficult for some folks to understand um, you know, why they were getting so much and now why so little. And what all right, you're concerned. Um, what impact might this have? I guess, what, what, what steps could people take? Is there anything they can do, or this is just the way it is? Well, I think it's a good time for everyone who's on SNAP to um, do a check-in, you know, just to make sure that the department has all of their accurate information. So if they last, gave their caseworker their income information four months ago maybe, and their income has gone down, they'll wanna let their caseworker know that right away because it, it, because it matters now. If their income is lower, if their rent is higher, if their utilities, um, if there's been a change in their utilities, maybe before their utilities were covered in their rent, maybe now they have to pay those. So if there's been an increase in their shelter expenses um, and or a decrease in their income um, or maybe a change in their household size, maybe there's been a, a child born or brought into the household and so there's more people, you're feeding more people in that household. All of those changes can result in a higher benefit amount. And we wanna make sure that folks are letting DHS know and maybe asking them to recalculate to make sure that they're getting the right the right benefits. And how many people do you think are just gonna be blindsided by this? That all of a sudden this month in January of 2022, this month they're just gonna get $20 when they're expecting 250. And that's the maximum range, but they're gonna get much less than they were expecting. Right, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't begin to guess or ballpark that, but based on our experience and the conversations that we have with our clients, um, I, would, I would not be surprised if most folks will be surprised by what they get on their um, EBT cards this month. Okay, and what you're saying then is you recommend, so they're gonna get this lower amount, likely, that you mm -hmm. check back in I mean, do they call legal aid? I mean, it's, there's not, it's not. They can't. What, what could you do if they call legal aid? Well, we have, um, we have a tool um, that we can use to screen them for what their correct benefit amount should be. That's pretty close to what the Department of Human Services uses. So if they have trouble getting through to their caseworker to, to get that information, 
we can run um, we can run that tool and tell them, okay, based on the income information you've told us, based on the shelter expenses you've told us about, this is where this is what you should be getting, and we can compare it to what they actually got this month. And if there's a mismatch, um, then we can sometimes advocate for them with DHS to get that corrected and changed. The other thing that can be very challenging, um, well, there's a few challenges uh, in terms of making those changes at this time. One of those is um, a lot of the Department of Human Services offices are open for appointment only. So in pre-COVID times, if you wanted to change your benefits, you might just be able to go down to the office, hand over your documentation at the window, get a receipt for that documentation, and that would be processed. It's a little more difficult to arrange to do that these days. Um, you may be asked to leave something in a drop box at the office. You don't get a receipt for that. So it may be difficult to prove when you submitted that or if you submitted that information. It may be hard to follow up and see if that was processed correctly. So for folks who kind of encounter those, um, those barriers to making those changes, um, at Legal Aid, we are, we are um, sometimes able to kind of utilize our contacts um, and get people through that process when, they, when they're stuck somewhere. We've heard that in COVID, I believe, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, childhood poverty uh, was impacted, I guess, positively, I guess, right? I mean, there, some of this money helped with childhood poverty. Absolutely. Um, did you see that? Have you seen that that was the case in Tennessee? Do you get that sense from, from the clients that, that you have with legal aid? I mean, was this money making a difference in your opinion or was this too much? I mean, I guess that could be the other question. If they were, if it was 20 and then it goes up to 250, were they giving away too much at that point? What, what, what about all of those things? You know, I, um, in, I, I, I need to stop short of giving my opinion on, on policy decisions, but I will say that based on what I hear from my clients, um, these are not folks who were um, living high on the hog <laughs> with their food stamp benefits. You know, even somebody who may have only been eligible for $16 um, is not somebody who was living comfortably, who was not food insecure um, before those extra benefits were issued. Um, you know, I wish I could share with you some of the just excitement over very simple things that our client shared with us. One of our clients, uh, when we explained to her that she would have these extra benefits available to her now, this was a, um, an older woman um, who had lived, you know, was living on a fixed income, very um, tight budget month to month, uh, just sort of exclaimed that she would be able to buy herself a salmon filet. And she was so excited to be able to do that. Um, so, so we're not talking about um, people who were who didn't need this money to meet their nutritional needs. Um, these are people who maybe for the first time in a while had a better chance to do that. Right. Let's um, let's go to the phones here. Uh, let's go to Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. Yeah. Hello. Uh, go Hello. right ahead. Right ahead. What, what's on your mind, Ronnie? Yeah, okay. They say this ain't got no COVID in Tennessee, but I'm hearing all over TV where it's still COVID. It's still COVID. But, I mean, they give other countries millions of dollars, and they cut the benefits out when they give people for COVID and stuff like that. Well, we think we ain't got no COVID in Tennessee, but every day I'm hearing about people catching COVID dying and on new strains, stuff like that. And my next question, my mother-in-law died and she had, was in a nursing home, she had over a thousand dollars worth of food stamps and her daughter couldn't use them because it was just in her mom's name. I don't see why they just couldn't let her daughter use them since it's in the same family. So I wanna listen and see what you say, thank you. Thank you, Ronnie, thanks for calling in. 
I'm um, interested in the mother-in-law. Can you pass down food stamps? Do you do you know how that works, or no, what, what about that? You, you can't. You're not able to transfer them to somebody else um, who's not in the food stamp household. So when you sign up for food stamps, you list everybody who's in the household, and those people may or may not be relatives, but it's anybody who shares, um, who's under the same roof, who purchases and prepares food together. That's the ho that's the food stamp household, um, and if and if the daughter um, was was not in in mom's food stamp household, unfortunately, she's not eligible to use those benefits. Although she might be eligible for them on her own, you know, if she were to apply and see if she's eligible. So unfortunately, that's not something that you're able to pass down. It's not like cash. Yeah, it's not passable. Um, you don't pass that down. Then he said, "There's he's here and there's still COVID. There's no doubt we're having a surge in COVID cases, um, and yet this benefit will expire. How do those two, because I'm, I'm sure everybody's seeing that, that, you know, that there's still these COVID cases, but the COVID money that you're talking about is going to expire. What, how, 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 how does that all work out? Right, I mean, it does, it's certainly um, just an interesting, you know, kind of confluence of circumstances where this benefit is expiring and yet we're seeing the highest case numbers um, that we've ever seen. We're, we're breaking records. Um, some of that is um, just sort of that this expiration of benefits is operating a bit on a delay. The, um, the state of Tennessee declaration of em emergency declaration expired in November. So then there was a grace period month issued in December, and now those benefits have expired in January. Well, since November, fr from November to now, we've seen um, a significant change in the COVID situation. Um, I certainly can't speak for whether that will change anything about the SNAP benefits in Tennessee. There have been other states that stopped issuing those extra benefits and then um, wound up issuing them again because of a change in the circumstances around COVID. Um, I would certainly not encourage anyone to rely on that happening here in Tennessee though. Right, right. All right, that sets the table for our discussion. I encourage people to call in with their individual situation or with a question because it would help everyone. There are a lot of people that are watching that have questions and, and this is a chance to call in and and kind of walk through your situation. There is the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.